الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing with 30 themes from 30 verses of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal 30 themes, different topics, different subjects and as we highlighted at the beginning for self-improvement getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise also bettering our communities and society around us and this evening today inshallah ta'ala we will discuss a verse in Surah Al-Anfal and I know in the workbook there is a slight error with regards to the reference of the verse Naam, it's Surah Al-Anfal verse number 24 there was a printing error in the workbook so inshallah ta'ala if you have the workbook then make that change it's Surah Al-Anfal verse number 24 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasool Ida da'akum lima yuhyikum Wa alamu anna allaha yahulu bayna al-mar'i wa qalbih Wa annahu ilayhi tuhsharoon O you who believe O you who believe, answer Allah and his messenger when he calls you to that which will give you life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing the believers O oh, you who believe answer Allah and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he calls you to that which will give you a life a meaningful life a happy life a pleasant life and know that Allah comes between a person and their own heart and to Allah, you will all return and be gathered. This is the ayah that we are going to discuss today, insha'Allah ta'ala. And in this verse, there are many benefits. We find in this verse, na'am, the ingredients for happiness. And happiness is something that every human being is looking for. That is why Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, what could be summarized as if you were to analyze and study all of the creation everyone is trying and attempting to remove misery and anxiety from their lives that's the meaning of, of his words rahimahullah ta'ala now everyone is in pursuit of happiness lakin takhtalif at-turuq we find that people are taking different paths and in reality many of those paths lead to misery if they oppose what we will hear insha'Allah ta'ala in this lesson Naam, Allah Azza wa Jal wa ta'ala directing us to things that will result in a happy pleasant life Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O you who believe Addressing the believers Addressing the believers Naam Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasool Answer Obey Allah and the messenger Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It's a command We don't have a choice We can't say I think I don't feel like it Or maybe Allah Azza wa Jalla commands, "Istajibu lillahi wa lil Rasul." Answer Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we will read, inshaAllah Taala, from the explanation of Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimahullah, for this verse, and also maybe some benefits from Al Imam Al Saadi, rahimahullah. Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim, he mentioned that. He said, فَتَضَمَّنَتْ هَذِي الْآيَةُ أُمُورًا This verse comprises of a number of things. 
This verse in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 24, it comprises of a number of things. He said, Ahaduha, firstly, Anna al-hayat al-nafi'a, innama tahsulu bil-istijabati lillahi wa lirasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faman lam tahsul lahu hadhi al-istijabatu, fala hayat lahu. He said that one of the benefits, a beneficial life, a happy life, a pleasant life, a life that you will enjoy living, is only attained through answering Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Obeying Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever fails to answer Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the manner that Allah has commanded, then they will not have a happy life. They will not have a meaningful life. And look, there are many of the examples of that around us. Unfortunately, there are examples. There are examples of people that fail to obtain a meaningful, pleasant life. And you find people, some people, contemplating suicide. Some people committing suicide. May Allah protect us all from that. The believer, the mu'min, that has complete faith, will never think of such a thing, regardless of what they are going through and what predicament they find themselves in. Because the believer, na'am, إِذَا أُعْطِيَ shakar, When they are blessed by Allah, they are thankful. With a tuli a sabar, and when they are tried and they are tested with afflictions and calamities, they are patient. Wa ida adnam astaghfar, and when they sin, they repent. Allah Azza wa Jal. So Ibn al-Qayyim, the Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, whoever fails to answer in the way Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded them to answer, they will have no meaningful. They will not have a pleasant life, even though they may live the life similar to the life of an animal. So someone, be a, someone, a person, may be alive, but their life and the life of the animal is the same. He said, it is a shared style of life between this individual that doesn't answer Allah and the Messenger and an animal. From the lowest arm, the creatures. He said, فَالْحَيَاةُ الْحَقِيقِيَّةُ الطَّيِّبَةُ هِيَ حَيَاةُ مَنِ اسْتَجَابَ لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ A true happy life is the life of someone that answers Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They obey Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ظَاهِرًا وَبَاطِنًا Inwardly and outwardly. He said, فَهَاؤُلَا هُمَ الْأَحْيَاءُ وَإِنْمَاتُ He said, these individuals that obeyed Allah that answered Allah, they answered the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, they are those who truly lived even when they die. He said, وَإِن كَانُوا أَحْيَاءَ الْأَبْدَانِ نَعْمْ وَغَيْرُهُمْ أَمْوَاتِ وَإِن كَانُوا أَحْيَاءَ الْأَبْدَانِ And anyone else, he said they are dead even though their bodies may be living. Their heart is dead, their soul is dead. And there's no benefit with a life if your heart is dead and your soul is dead. It's like an empty shell. It's like an empty shell, a routine with no enjoyment. The believer enjoys life. That's why the believer with complete Iman, they don't need drugs. We mentioned in the khutbah today the hadith. La yashrabu al-khamra and no one drinks alcohol or any type of intoxicant. No one gets high. And at the time that they drink alcohol or they get high, they are a believer with complete faith. They're not. If a person had complete faith, they won't get high. The believer loves life because it's a blessing from the blessings of Allah Azawajal. That is why in the morning we say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana. All praise belongs to Allah who brought us to life after we were dead with the smaller death, the minor death. The believer 
praises Allah Azza thanks Allah for life. It's a blessing. But that's the life of the one who answers Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some people they wake up and they're terrified to see another day because it's misery and it's torture and that's for those who refuse to answer Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he said, happiness is of levels like misery is of levels. وَلِهَادَا كَانَ أَكْمَلَ النَّاسِ حَيَاةً أَكْمَلَهُمْ إِسْتِجَابَةً لِدَعْوَةِ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He said, and that is why you find the happiest of the people, they are those who answer the call of the messenger the most. The more you answer the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, the more you obey the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, the happier you will be. That is why after the prophets and messengers, the happiest of the people were the companions of Ridwan Allah They were the happiest of the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مَا دَعَ إِلَيْهِ فَفِيهِ الْحَيَاءِ Because everything the Prophet وسلم, invited and called to, it comprises of life. Everything the Prophet وسلم, calls us to, it is life. It will give you a happy life. Our prayers, praying our prayers, the five daily prayers, a happy life. Fasting Ramadan correctly, a happy life. Now, likewise, respecting and obeying your parents, a happy life. Honoring the elders, a happy life. Having mercy to the youth, a happy life. Everything. Respecting ilm knowledge and people of knowledge, a happy life. The more you obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his Sunnah, the more you obey him, the happier you will be. Regardless of where you are, where your predicament is. Whether you're the richest person in the world or the poorest person in the world. Money can't buy you happiness like money can't buy you love. Only fake love. And if you ever had money, you know that. When people have money, you have a lot of people pretending and faking that they love them for the money. Genuine love for the believer. Because the believer loves the believer. And Allah Azawajal, if Allah loves you, Allah will place love in the hearts of the believers towards you. Doesn't matter who you are. If Allah Azawajal loves a servant, male or female, Allah Azawajal will place love in the hearts of the believers for that person. It's not about money. Yes, money can buy you fake love. But it doesn't last. Once that money is gone and finished, so does the love. Over. However, Allah Azza wa Jalla He even told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Lo anfaqta ma fil ardi jamia." He said, "If you spend everything in the earth, you would have never have united their hearts." Allah unites the hearts. Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. So now, everything that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam invited to and called to comprises of life. It will give a person a happier life. So that is why we learn the Quran and the Sunnah so that we can implement it to live a happy life, whether you're young or whether you're old. If the youth, they started imitating the Prophet والسلام, you would see the change. <coughs> now, the youth at the time of the Prophet والسلام, they weren't trying to imitate the singers of the dunya or the actors of the dunya, or any other people of the dunya. They were trying to imitate the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anas ibn Malik, from a young age, he would be in the presence of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, learning the Sunnah. And Allah raised him. Tabaraka wa ta'ala, Allah raised Anas. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu an. Ibn Abbas wasn't interested in what the singers were doing, or the actors, or the so-called famous people of the dunya. He was worried about learning from the Prophet ﷺ. To the extent the Prophet made dua for Allah to give him understanding of the Qur'an. And he is known as the expert in interpreting the Qur'an. And even at a young age, Umar used to include him in the gatherings where they would consult on major affairs because of his knowledge, even when he was young. <coughs> That's the type of youth that we need, the youth that will change, insha'Allah ta'ala, our predicament and what we are seeing from the madness around us. 
فمن فاته جزء منه فاته جزء من الحياة whoever fails to answer Allah and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم then he will fail to attain a pleasant life according to his negligence and according to the level of his failure in answering Allah likewise وفيه من الحياة the individual will live a happy life depending on how much he responded to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then Ibn al-Qayyim explains when Allah azawajal said ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi wa lil rasul idha da'akum lima yuhyikum oh you who believe oh you who believe answer Allah and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he calls you to that which will give you life. Lima yuhyikum. What is the meaning of to that which will give you life? Ibn al-Qayyim explains. Ya'ni lil haq. Allah will guide you to the truth. Yes. If you answer Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will guide you to the truth. When the people differ, when the people are confused, Allah will guide you to the truth because you answered Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you followed the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and Allah will give you life, meaning to the truth. Mujahid, he explained it like that. The student of Ibn Abbas radiallahu an. Qatada, he said, huwa had al-Qur'an. To that which will give you life, meaning the Qur'an. Because huwa had al-Qur'an, fihi al-hayatu, wal-thiqatu, wal-najatu, wal-isma, fi dunya wal-akhirah. Because the Qur'an, the Qur'an comprises of life and salvation and protection in this world and the Akhirah. We mentioned in the khutbah today, the Qur'an is the furqan, the criterion between truth and falsehood. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you life through the Qur'an, then you will be able to differentiate between tawheed and shirk, sunnah and bid'ah, ta'ah, obedience and disobedience. You will be a person of Tawheed, you will be a person of a Sunnah, and you will be a person of obedience by the will of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. A Sunni, he said, Lima yuhikum, to that which will give you life, meaning Al Islam. Meaning Al Islam. Ahyahum bihi ba'da mawtim bil kufr. Allah gave them life through Islam after they were, after they were once dead due to disbelief. Allah will give them life through Islam after they were once dead due to their disbelief. Yes, Islam is the greatest blessing we have. It's our prized possession. It's worth more than everything we have. Anything you have, Islam is worth more than that. Anything of the dunya you can think of, Islam is more precious than that. Because without Islam, it is like the living dead. Dead but walking and moving. يتحركون ويأكلون They move, they drink, they eat but dead. Animals eat and drink. Animals move. The one without Iman is similar to that. An empty shell. And there are other expressions, Ikhwan, will suffice with that, insha'Allah ta'ala. Then, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he mentions, he said, insan mutarrun ila min al A person requires two types of life. All of us, as it relates to life, we need life in two areas. We need to be truly living in two areas. He said, hayatu badani, the first, life of the body. Life of the body, that will allow a person to tell the difference between what is beneficial and what is harmful. What is going to benefit them so they can select what's going to benefit them and stay away from what is harmful. And whenever you find that this life is deficient, then it will result in pain and weakness afflicting the individual. 
depending upon the deficiency of this life. And he gives an example so we can understand. The sick person, the one who is ill, the one who is depressed, the one who has anxiety, the one who suffers from distress, fear, poverty, and other than that. So these individuals, somebody who's sick, somebody depressed, somebody with anxiety, somebody with extreme poverty, yes, they're living. However, their life is not like the life of someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them well-being and safeguarded them from these things. We can all relate to that. So we all need this type of life, life of the body. He said, وَحَيَاتُ قَلْبِهِ وَرُوحِهِ This is even more important. The life of the heart and the soul. We need life of the heart and life of the soul. Why? أَلَّتِي بِهَا يُمَيِّزُ بَيْنَ الْحَقِّ وَالْبَاطِلِ Because it is through the light, it is through the life of the heart and the life of the soul that the individual is able to differentiate between truth and falsehood. Correctness and deviation. <laughs> guidance and misguidance. So the individual who has life of the heart, they will always select the truth over falsehood. Now, you will find that this individual, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions, they will be able to dis distinguish between what is beneficial for them and harmful. As it relates to knowledge, as it relates to inten intentions, as it relates to knowledge, as it relates to intentions and actions, وَتُفِيدُهُ قُوَةِ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِرَادَةِ وَالْحُبْ لِلْحَقِّ He said, likewise, وَتُفِيدُهُ قُوَةِ الْإِيمَانِ This will also aid them to have strong faith and a strong intent and a strong love for the truth. And they will have a strong hatred and dislike for falsehood. Yes, the one who has a healthy heart, they will hate falsehood. And they will not accept it no matter who brings it. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, فَإِذَا بَطُلَتْ حَيَاتُ بَطُلَتْ تَمْيِيزُ If the life is lost from the heart and the soul, then the ability to distinguish is lost as well. May Allah protect us from that. Naam, Al-Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah, he mentions in his tafsir as well, he said, when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَعْلَمُوا Know أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Know that Allah intervenes between a person and their heart. Allah comes between a person and their heart. He said, فَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنْ تَرُدُّ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ أَوَّلَ مَا يَأْتِيكُمْ Beware of rejecting the command of Allah when it first comes to you. When the command of Allah reaches you, brothers and sisters, submit and surrender to it. He said, Habidukum Allah, because if a person rejects the command of Allah when it comes to them, فَيُحَالُ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُ إِذَا أَرَدْتُمُوهُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكُ It may be that there will be a barrier between you and the command of Allah, you and the truth later on, even if you desire it. وَتَخْتَلِفْ قُلُوبُكُمْ And your hearts will differ. That is why, فَلْيُكْثِرَ الْعَبْدِ Min qawl, the servants should say frequently, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. That was one of the supplications that the Prophet said the most, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O changer of hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. So therefore, knowing that Allah is the changer of hearts, tabarak wa ta'ala, He changes them as He wills. A person should have moist upon their tongue the dua that the Prophet taught us, Ya muqallib al qulub. Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Changer of hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. We find that in the Quran. Allah praised the people of knowledge who were firm in their knowledge and they were not deluded by their intelligence. They were not deluded by their station. They still feared that they may go astray. And they supplicated to Allah. Rabbana la qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. Our Lord, do not cause our hearts to deviate once you have guided us. May Allah grant us all firmness. And at the end of the verse, Allah Azawajal said, وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ And you will all be gathered before Allah. You will all return to Allah. 
Now, don't let this world fool you. Don't let your status fool you. Don't let your riches fool you. Don't let your ego fool you. Now, don't let it fool you. Don't let any of those things fool you. Don't let your followers on IG fool you or TikTok or anything else. Don't let your husband fool you. Don't let your wife fool you. Don't let your children fool you. Don't let anything fool you. Because if you don't answer Allah and the Messenger, you're going to stand before Allah and Allah will reward the good doer with good. And the one who committed evil and perpetrated evil, Allah will recompense them accordingly. Naam, don't be fooled. Because some people may laugh and they may mock those people that answer Allah and the Messenger. But the believers will have the last laugh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah and protect us from the fire. Naam, Allah Azza wa said, وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ And to Allah Azawajal, you will all return and you will all be gathered, all of you. And even in the Akhirah, look, in the dunya, the levels of happiness, it varies. The happiest of the people are those who answer Allah Azawajal and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most. In the Akhirah, the people who receive the most reward, again, are those who answered Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most. So in reality, the good of this world and the good of the Akhirah, we can say we find the ingredients in this verse. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Oh, you who believe. If you want to be happy in the dunya and you want to be from the people of paradise and you want a lofty station in paradise, istajibu lillahi wa lir rasul. Answer Allah and the Messenger. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ When he calls you to what is going to give you life. وَعْلَمُوا and know أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ That Allah comes between a person and their heart. وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ In the next verse, Allah warns the people. He said, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ العقاب. He said, fear a fitna, a trial, a tribulation, a punishment that will not only afflict the oppressors. Subhanallah. The oppressors, they're going to get what they deserve. They're going to get what they deserve. If not in this life, in the hereafter. وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً Fear a fitna, a trial, an affliction that will not only affect the oppressors alone, exclusively. And know that Allah Azza wa Jal is severe in his punishment. Brothers and sisters, if we look at another ayah from the Quran, fitna can result in you not answering Allah and the Prophet If you reject the command of Allah, if you reject the command of the Messenger Allah Azza wa may punish that person with a fitna. May Allah protect us from that. Allah said, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Look, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ Let those people who oppose the command of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم beware. Why? In case a fitna, an affliction will come upon them. Or a severe punishment. Why? Because they rejected the command of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They did not answer Allah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And look what resulted. May Allah protect us all from that. And some of Ahl al-Ilm, they said that fitna is deviation in the heart. That fitna is a deviation that appears in the heart. When you reject the command of Allah, when you reject the command of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person can be afflicted with a deviation that is placed in their hearts. May Allah protect us from that. And Allah tells us, When their hearts started to deviate like that, Allah made their hearts deviate. Allah made them go astray. That explains one of the reasons why people go astray. When they reject the command of Allah, they reject the command of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some people, it's like they lost their mind. Last week it was Sunnah, Tawheed and Sunnah. And then you see them, SubhanAllah, it's like you can't even recognize them now. That is why we find in this verse the ingredients for happiness. 
happiness is found in obeying Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the way to happiness.